the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations. The Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations is the largest evangelical church in all of Europe. Located in Kyiv, Ukraine, the church in its nine years of existence has seen more than one million people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are more than 20,000 members who regularly attend the church services. The social work of the Embassy of God is accepted by the Ukrainian government. During the next 30 minutes, you have the opportunity to encounter the living God. We believe this program will help you to develop your relationship with Him. Jesus forgives every sin, sets people free from addictions, heals every sickness, brings harmony to your family and prosperity to your business. Only God can bring a real solution to the situation you are in and give the answer to your every question. He can help you to fulfill the calling and destiny that is waiting for you. You are welcome to visit the Embassy of God webpage at www.godembassy.org or write us at tv at godembassy.org. You're watching the Embassy of God program. You're watching the Embassy of God program. Once upon a time there lived an old man and an old woman. Not really old, but in that age when you are still capable of doing everything, but have wisdom. When your kids have grown up, you have a house, a car or two, time to rest, but no desire. A cottage on the picturesque bank of the Kamienka River, a small cozy house with five or six rooms. You have everything you want, but it feels like something is missing. I saw no point in having a big house, nice furniture and nice clothes. I live in these four walls by myself. I never go into all these rooms. The house is so big, I don't need that much room. The rooms were not being used. Their oldest daughter got married, and the youngest sometimes comes to visit. She is a beautiful girl. She has graduated from university, has a good job in a bank, and spends all her free time in the Christian mission serving children there. She started bringing children from the mission to her parents' house to have fun and experience life in a family. We are not a wealthy family. We are middle class. We had two cars, two daughters, a house in Kiev, which we still have, and a cottage in Kozhenka County. I came to the Lord and He revolutionized my life. I believed God and began to view life differently. Something happened in me. My plans and dreams have changed. And if I desired diamonds before I came to the Lord, they lost their meaning for me. I said, Lord, I don't want any diamonds, but instead that I not lose my sight, I have to use a hearing aid for a long time. If you do, then I will bring many children into my house. It was almost insane, even now, many people still think that it's strange to take kids off the streets into your house. I feel bad for people who are so in love with their big houses, cars, and expensive clothes. I see it as a problem. However, the main thing is that I don't even know why there are so many more children on the streets now. Our country is not in war right now. I could understand if we were in the middle of a war and children were abandoned on the streets. However, we are not in war. We have got plenty of groceries in the stores. Our people are hardworking. There are no earthquakes or disasters. However, we see more and more children on the streets each day. I ask myself only one question. Why is this happening? And I saw that my mission in life is to take these children who end up on the streets. 
Oleg was their first son. He was taken from the hospital where he was dying from tuberculosis. Their second son was another Oleg. The doctors had to tie him to his bed in the psychiatric hospital because he wanted to commit suicide. He was driven by pains, abuse, and violence from his past. His brothers Max, Vadek, and Yura would run away from their abusive father and mother, who were alcoholics and drug addicts. Their oldest daughter, Olya, didn't talk for a long time and used to scream in her sleep. She was physically taken away from her mother because she wanted to choke her and throw her under a train. I was writing everything down, all of the information, because if I... The youngest Olya was abandoned by her parents in a tram. She didn't talk, only squealed. She was absolutely exhausted when they found her. Basically, it is a family. You have to work hard in order to have a strong family because the kids are all different and their ages are different. They came from various ranks of society. We knit them all together now into one family. We are trying to make it work as a family so that everybody is happy. It's too bad that I haven't kept pictures from when they first came. It is such joy to see them now. I can't even recognize them. They have changed so much. They have grown up and will be soon taller than me. The kids were very little when they came. Yura had developed rachitis. His head was very large and he had dystrophy. When you look at him now, he's such a healthy boy. Our other boy, Oleg, we took him from the children's hospital in Pushavadita. He had been in the hospital for two years. He was very sick and had lost all his hair. He was handicapped. His body would break into sores when he drooled on himself. The Adoption Council, the group that determined the legibility of adoptive parents, told me that I was too old and should adopt a healthy child instead of a sick one. I didn't even think that I was adopting a child with tuberculosis, that this child would be entering my house with my other two daughters and my husband. I didn't care about the fact that he was sick. All I wanted was to save the child. I saw that he needed me. And that only here in the village, where there is fresh air and good food, fresh milk, vegetables and eggs. It is different from the city. Basically, I didn't have any fear in me at all. I trusted the Lord that the child was God and that God would save him. Now he's in grade 3. When he first held his pen, his arm was shaken. I was afraid that he would never be able to write. Now he can write and his arm doesn't shake anymore. When we brought him to the house, he would faint continuously. I would bring him food outside while he was playing. We fed him very well so that he would grow and get well faster. Because he looked like a dried fish, so thin, he was so skinny that you could see his ribs. He has been living with us for four years. We even cut his hair, but now it is long again and needs a haircut. His scar marks are gone. You can't see them anymore. He doesn't drool. I want to testify about what God has done. We haven't been to the doctor for the whole time he lived with us. We have three family type orphanages in Kozhenka village. But this family, the Shimrai family, was the first family in our district to take kids from the street into their home. They showed a way out of a horrible situation our society was in. 
важливий такий вихід. They truly displayed an example to be followed in their acts of love by taking the kids into their home and by loving and caring for them. They are providing the kids with real parental love and care, and the kids are happy. They could not wish for a better childhood than this. It is not just a family-type orphanage, but a real family. We had another difficult boy, Oleg, who spoke Ukrainian. He came from a broken background. He used to say, nobody loves me. He warned us that he would go and hang himself. Sometimes when the oldest would offend him, he would take a knife and start running around threatening people. We would try talking to him about God that he loves him, and that he loves all of us. We would tell him that we understand things happened to you in the past, but it's over now. You are saved, and do not need to worry. We love you the way you are. You have a future, and you need to live for that. What will the future be like for these children? How could they adopt kids from the street when everyone talks about kids inheriting negative genes? What if these adopted children, raised in good families, would suddenly begin drinking or using drugs? We don't know what their future holds. It could happen in any family, really. Who are we trying to fool when we say, what if? The inherited genes that cause bad habits to develop are nothing new, but a curse that lasts three or four generations. Any family could be affected by it. These children are not bad children, but the curse makes them bad. The only way to change them is to break the curse in their lives. But no man can do it. Only the Almighty God is able to break the curse. God has shown us a gift that he has put in each child. For example, let's take a leg, who is very sick. He's a musician. He can dance, and when he picks up a guitar, starts singing, he can't read or write yet, but he can sing and does a very good job. Herman is our soccer player. He is very quick. He does things in the blink of an eye. Ola is a doctor. Second Ola is our poetess and an artist. She can really draw. Maxim is our farmer. Yur is our chef. He can't talk very well. I tell him, Yura, you need to go to the speech pathologist to work on your speech. And he says to me, why do I need to learn how to speak better? I will be a chef. And why does a chef need to talk? He needs to cook. Vadik is a banker. The main thing is that they pray and move in that direction. It doesn't matter how smart, kind, loving, and strong Valentina is. God is the one who did it all. Everyone in the house and in the village and outside the village knows that me and my house will serve the Lord. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows how this family was born. And God gave us these children. God takes care of them. Takes care of me too. Just think about this. I am 55 years old. I don't get sick. The children stay healthy. They don't get sick either. You are watching the Embassy of God program. What else do you want? The hysterical mother of an alcoholic, prostitute, or drug addict screams at the top of her lungs? I worked all of my life to provide for you, to dress you and feed you. What do you want from me? God's blessings and a prayer from you, Mom. 
Every child has a need to call somebody mommy. Our boy didn't have anybody to call mommy. He was left in the streets when he was very little. Half of my kids call me mommy and half of them call me grandma. Once we found him in the bathroom practicing saying the word mom, we said, you can call me mommy if you want. But he said, you're old, you're a grandma. It's okay, I said, you can call me grandma then. I told him, you need to pray and you will find a mom. You know, the child prayed for three years and they found the mother. And she's a great mother, she's young, now they visit her regularly. They prayed about her and they found her. The kids themselves went to visit the parents. They started going to church. Kids told us that their parents got saved there. But they still drink and swear. But when kids come to visit them, they tell the parents not to drink or swear, so they don't. They stopped using drugs and seem to be starting a normal life. I wouldn't normally let them go there, but I want the kids to be the light to their parents. They are the light to this world. They tell their parents about God and how He saved them and tell them about our big happy family. Even if at one point the parents would recover and would want their children back, I wouldn't object. My assignment is to raise them, so that when people meet them, they could say, I want a son-in-law like that. That is a wonderful child, very well brought up. This child grew up to be everything he could be. What does a child need to become a nice person? Basically, to be a hardworking, kind, blessing and help to others. They raise their children on the principles of Christian morals, on biblical principles. When we look at these children and watch them, their behavior and the way they treat each other, it is really true. They are well taught. This high standard of morals, love and brotherhood is seen in their family. You would think that you've got everything and are doing the will of God. We have the kids, we have a house and a lot of land, trees, flowers and a river. It is beautiful here and we love our children and we are a happy family. What else could we need? Raising the children and caring for them. Because I'm already 55. However, I found that God never settles us down to stay at one place. We are to move forward and leave a legacy behind. I took the kids in and I'm responsible for their lives. They turn 18 and what? They're on their own? No, I want to lay a foundation in their lives that they can build on. I want to help them in the process. I will turn 60 when they turn 20. What will happen then? Maxim has a gift to be a carpenter. He's a farmer. He can make something with his hands and sell it and make money. I want to be able to teach him more and direct him. Here is a workshop. It has to be ours because we have a big family, 13 children. My oldest daughter got married, my younger daughter is 24 and not married yet, but she will get married and the other ones will grow up and have their own families. You saw what our property looks like and when you come in a year you will see what God does. We had these old boxcars on our property and we needed tractors and cranes to move them. 
нужен был трейлер, нужен был кран, целый день кран работал, это было очень все дорого. Я говорила, для меня это тяжело. Вот. Но Бог так двигал, что сами люди приехали People в дом, и завтра вам приняли помощь, переставить вам домой. И day, вы знаете, на следующий день люди подходили к трейлеру, и я увидела Божью руку, 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 и я God helps you. I want to say this to all the people. Take a look at the life you're living. You're covered in grace. You have joy and you never get sick. These are our children and this is our spiritual father. If God has begun something, He will complete. There will be no more children abandoned on the streets. Imagine if only 100 people in our Embassy of God church family made the decision you have made, how many people would be taken off the streets? We as a church will definitely support you and help you financially. If you are in need, God will open up the doors for you and new sources. This is what we wanted to communicate to you regarding the street children. People often ask me how I will provide a university education for my children. And I just say, that is up to God. As far as my opinion, I do not pursue university education. The main thing is to raise a child by putting the best you can into him, so that when he grows up, he will be hardworking and knows that he has to work in order to achieve something, so that he knows how to take care of a household and help others. How to help me when I put on my shoes, my kids bend over and tie my shoelaces. They say to me, Grandma, you're the best. We will never forget you. Anything could happen in life, and maybe they will forget about me, but I forgive them. I know God will not forget me. The main goal is to give hope, give them strength, so that when they face difficulties in, on their way, they won't be afraid and they would know what to do. Then the victory is theirs. I'm so thankful to God that He allowed me to be born into this family and to these parents. They are an example to me. I pray for my parents, I pray for my mother, I can watch her every day and learn something new from her. Thank you, Mom. I want to take over this race after my mom. May the Lord keep us and help us. There are so many kids out there. Да не оставит нас Господь, потому что детей так много. Ведь кожен ци спокой, Виля греб над рекой, Живе дружная семья, ты и я, Пив Господь нас у цей дим, Щоб жилось нам краще всіх, Ми з'єднаєм наші руки, І не знатимем розлуки, Ми зростаєм працьовиті, У любові і добрі, На весні посадим квіти, And they lived happily ever after. They knew that they would never die. They built a new house, even bigger than the old one. And their house was built on the rock. And Jesus was that rock. Its walls were held up by faith and hope. And they were warmed by their love. The end.
You're watching the Embassy of God program. Thank you for being with us today. You have been watching a program from the Embassy of the Blessed Kingdom of God for all nations in Kyiv, Ukraine. If you want to become a part of God's growing movement in Ukraine, then we suggest you do the following. First, come and visit the main events of the Embassy of God, our yearly nationwide anniversary conference, our summer and winter pastors' fasts, which are visited by over 1,000 pastors and ministers from all around the world, our pastors and leaders' seminars that are held by Pastor Sunday twice a year, our annual men's conference, our monthly anointing service for all Embassy of God churches in Kiev on the first Sunday of each month, and also our annual March of Life on the main street of Kyiv, which had about 50,000 believers in the year 2003. Second, we suggest that you come to Kyiv at any time and visit church services every Sunday and Thursday, topical night prayers, a different theme every night, general night prayers every Friday night, homeless shelter and clinic open every day, Rehabilitation Center for Alcoholic and Drug Addicts where over 2,000 people have been freed from addictions during its existence, open every day. Also, you can visit any of over 200 ministries of the Embassy. Third, you can come to the Embassy of God and participate in God's work in Kyiv, Ukraine as a missionary. Fourth, you can come to Kyiv and attend the nine-month Bible school program at Joshua Missionary Bible Institute, where you will learn from leading ministers of the Embassy of God. Fifth, if it is in your heart, you can become a financial partner of God's work here and through this, release the anointing and blessing of the Embassy of God upon your life. Sixth, you can purchase a wide variety of audio and video cassettes CDs and books by Apostle Sunday Adelaja and other pastors of the Embassy of God. Seventh, you can get all this and other information at our website www.godembassy.org. You've been watching the Embassy of God program from Kiev, Ukraine.